Okay, let's go over layouts. So this is the file that we will be using. Um, there's some geometry and line work um, already in the model. And um, this is the environment that you are all really familiar with, with Rhino. Um, and it's the primary working area, but I want you to consider that there are actually two places where you can work in Rhino. Um, you can start to think about this as model space, but then there is also another environment which in other programs is called uh, paper space. In Rhino, it, uh, these areas are referred to as layouts. But um, these layouts are basically areas where you can format um, your work to make drawings. And um, I'm sure you're all familiar with printing from, the, um, from model space. But it's um, a really clunky way to print, right? Like you hit Control P, and this uh, thing pops up, and it's not particularly good. Um, it's uh, it's kind of uh, um, you know more for making quick, um, you know, desperate drawings for um, for studio desk crits, and um, and you don't particularly good good results. Uh, paper space, however, the layout tabs allow you to do things much more nicely. And I have a couple set up here. And um, what I want to show you is that uh, you will always have a viewport in a layout, uh, one or more viewports. And these viewports, if you double click them, will allow you to um, go inside the, uh, the viewport back into model space. So when I am uh, doing things in here, I'm actually affecting the geometry in model space. And I'm able to zoom around and look inside the drawing uh, or look inside model space because I have this detail uh, locked. So if I unlock that and go inside and start um, zooming around, it's going to change the scale of the drawing. But once I have it locked, I can zoom around and actually edit things. So if I add something here, like a circle, uh, if I go back to the top view, you can see that that circle has been added in model view. So, um, so it's actually really, and if I delete it here, obviously, um, it's going to be deleted in the layout. Um, so it's a really fast way of uh, kind of tweaking drawings and making changes on the fly. The, um, the other thing I want to point out about this layout is that the, um, you can put text and graphics directly in the layout. So this text, while it's sort of within the frame of the detail, is not um, inside, the, inside the detail. It's actually inside the layout itself. And um, if I double click in here, you can see that I can't select the text. I have to click outside, and now I can select the text. So this can be really great. And if you wanted to make a title block or add graphics, you can, um, you can definitely add graphics within the layout, which will, um, which will print. Uh, but you won't see that if you go back out into model space. So layouts uh, are um, not just a uh, place to print, but they're another place where you can actually work within Rhino to make presentation material. Um, one, uh, let's point out something about uh, details. I've already shown you that here. Um, so I have the, the properties open and it's, um, you know, by default, you see these properties, but if you select um, a detail, there's going to be a tab for the detail, which you can click here to, um, to set uh, things about the detail. Right now it's locked, um, but we can see that uh, details will always have a scale. Um, that may not be an architectural scale or a scale that uh, is le a legitimate scale, let's say, but there's always gonna be a scale here. Um, and if we want to change the scale, so right now I have um, one inch on the page equals um, one foot in the model. So this is an eight scale drawing. If I want to change this to um, 16 scale, all I need to do here is type in one inch on the page equals 16 feet in the model. And um, now you can see I have this two scale. 
So, and um, right now the detail is unlocked, which means that if I come in here and start zooming around and panning around, you're going to see that the, the scale of the drawing is, is changing. So if I zoom in really far here, uh, really close, and select the detail again, now I'm closer to one to a quarter. So I could, um, I could just set that to the legitimate scale and then come down here and change this to one inch equals four feet in the model, which is um, a great way of figuring out perhaps what scale you want to print your drawing at. Now, um, the, so then if I wanted to keep this, I could lock it. And uh, now my detail is locked. I could come uh, inside and do further editing. And the cool thing about details, um, or layouts rather, is that you can have multiple details on a page at different scales. So um, here I have uh, detail number one, which is at um, 1 8 scale, and detail number two, which is at 16th scale. And um, let's say I could, you know, zoom out or zoom in and, uh, you know, give this a different scale if I wanted to. Um, maybe I want to make it 1 to 32. So this is a really um, great way of, um, you know, starting to think about layouts before you even go into Illustrator. And you can uh, very quickly and accurately change the scale of your drawings within the space of the layout. Now these layouts um, obviously have to have a page dimension. And um, if we, down here, we can look at the layout properties. And we can see that this is an eight and a half uh, by 11 uh, in, the for, in the portrait format. Um, we can update that here. When you make a layout for the first time, which I'll do in just a second, uh, you're going to specify the, the page size, but you can always change it. This layout, on the other hand, if we look at this and look at the layout properties here, uh, this one's at 11, uh, is an 11 by 17 page. So, um, and let's see here. So if, uh, if I wanted to change this, if I wanted to make this one an 11 by 17, all I would need to do here is say I want it to be 17 inches wide, 11 inches tall, and now it's going to update the layout. And um, then I could start making, uh, moving the details around and changing things to how I would like them to be. And we go in there and start, you know, maybe we want to show two over here or something like that. So I can, I can format things on the fly. Um, if you make a new layout, let's, uh, actually, let's do one more thing here. Uh, let's make a new layout. And let's say we want a 36, not 336, but 36 by 24 inch page, hit OK. Uh, we can actually um, populate it with uh, more than one detail if we want to, uh, up to four, so or no details. But uh, if you select one, it's going to put one detail on the page that will, um, that will uh, fill the page. And let's see what happens if we pick three. OK, now it's actually, um, so we have a detail here that is in plan. And it's, uh, here it's actually jumped into our uh, front and right views for the other, the other details. So if we want these to also be plans, um, what we need to do is um, click out of the details. So let's say we wanted to uh, double click in here. Now we're inside the detail. Uh, if we want to change this to a plan view, we just need to, once we're in the detail, come up to the top left to this pull down and uh, we need to set the view to plan. Oops, set view to top rather, sorry, set the view to the top, and, um, and now we're in top view. And we can, of course, start to um, move these and rescale these details. Um, if you have no details and you want to make a new one, you just need to type detail and add 
and we can pull out a rectangle and then we have a detail. Okay, a couple of other things. So um, let me go back to, is this locked? Let's see, it's locked. So let me go back to 1 8th and uh, pull this down to here. And then let's change this so we're at the showing the correct scale. So this is 1 8th. Um, one thing that uh, might be annoying if you're used to working in Illustrator is that um, when you jump into Illustrator, the page that you're working on is white. And by default, you have this, um, this light gray uh, in Rhino. Uh, so, which is nice because if you have white line weights, you'll uh, line colors, you'll see them. But if we want to make this more Illustrator-like, we can type options and we can go, you might not see it by default, but if we come down to appearance and um, hit the little arrow here, we're going to find colors and under viewport colors, there's a uh, spot for layout and we can actually click this and change that off gray color to white, hit okay and boom. Now we are seeing a white page and um, that will match what we see when we hit control P and um, and start to print um, this page. So um, let's see, is there anything else I want to mention here before uh, going over uh, line weights and um, some other things? You can, so the other thing I want to point out is that um, we are seeing line weights here. Uh, which is great, which is also um, Illustrator-like. Obviously, it wouldn't be very useful if we couldn't specify line weights, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in a few minutes. But, um, but we can also preview those line weights. And um, let's make sure this is locked. And so how are these line weights uh, showing up? But for you, they may not show up by default. And um, there's a command called print display. And right now, print display is uh, set to on. If I turn this off, OK, now you can see that there are no longer line weights um, showing. So, And that's how uh, Rhino will be set by default. So if you start making line weights, which I haven't shown you how to do yet, uh, but once you start assigning line weights to layers or to objects and you want to see them, you have to type print display and then you need to toggle them on. So by uh, you can see here that the state is set to off. I can toggle it to on and then I'm good to go. Now, um, actually, you might not see a line weight to start. And uh, so... The line weights are going to be approximate representations of what will uh, what will print, and uh, let's see if this is showing up in the viewport. Let's go back to the viewport. So I'm not actually seeing them here. So if I go to print display and toggle that to on for model space, oops, model print display state is on. Now I think that okay. So something has happened here. Let me pause the recording while I figure out exactly what that is. Okay, I figured out what's going on. Um, when I toggled on the print display, it's showing me what, um, how things are going to print. And the display color in the model viewport is not necessarily the same as the print color, or doesn't have to be the same. So um, for some reason in the model viewport, the print color for this yellow hatch, which was showing up before, was set to black. So I just need to come over here to print color and set that to yellow. OK, there we go. So hit enter. And um, so now we are viewing um, the print display. So we should see line types. Um, if we go back to the layout, uh, we are seeing line weights. And um, you set the print display independently for the model viewport. 
So for example, if I click in here, you can see the line types go away or the line weights go away. If I click outside, they're back. Um, so if I go jump back into the top view and hit print display again, uh, you can see here that there's a thickness. So um, when we're in the model viewport, we're always viewing a relative scale. And let's just make sure that, so when I zoom out, do I see them? I don't. So let's change that thickness to something larger like 100. Okay, so this is basically giving, so now I can really see them. And um, when I'm zoomed in and um, they get even darker when I zoom out. So they're pretty much staying a constant weight um, with uh, respect to the view, so the line. Uh, so that's why there is this thickness scale. So this is not going to be necessarily an accurate representation of how it's going to print out, but it will give you the relative thicknesses of uh, line weights um, to one another. So if you want to see the line weights while you're view, uh, working in the model view or in the, so now if we set it to, let's see if we can, now that we're in the viewport, state on, line types on. So it's not going to show it when working in the viewport. In the, when you jump into the detail, however, in model space here, you can, um, you can turn on the line weights. And then if you want to toggle that off, again, the command is print display and we can turn that off. There we go. And now we have the default. So um, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how you can actually set up line weights and we'll go from there.